This is one of the most important animals in human history. Out of the steppes of Africa, we revere their descendants as kings of the internet. No, we're not talking about lions. We're talking about the felines that domesticated themselves to become our purry companions. The African wildcat. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic. The African wildcat is a solitary predator who somehow managed to make a truce with humans, an event that led to one of the most enduring symbiotic relationships in history. So who are these elusive cats? We have exciting news. We're expanding our store and adding prints of all the art you've seen in our show. We've got incredible designs and products that capture the essence of your favorite animals and our adventures. We have art prints of every animal we've covered on Animal Logic, like this wolverine, and this amazing shoebill stork, and this coconut crab, the largest land invertebrate on Earth, pretty much life-size. We also have mugs and water bottles with animals from some of your favorite episodes. Ever wanted a coffee cup with all of my cat illustrations? Of course you did. And now you can finally have it. And we've just launched our new line of apparel, from baseball hats to beanies. And we'll be adding new products every month, so you can find the perfect holiday present for all the Animal Logic fans in your life. So head on over to our store, it's right below the video or shop directly on our YouTube channel page. Thanks for supporting Animal Logic, and I hope you enjoy the video. African wildcats are small cats in the Felis genus. They're found in Africa, as well as the Middle East and large parts of Asia, where they're known as Asiatic cats. The exact borders of their range are hazy, because in some areas they overlap and hybridize with other species. African wildcats are the southern neighbors of the European wildcat and the Scottish wildcat, which we have talked about before on the channel and were lucky enough to film back in 2019. Like other European wildcats, Highland tigers are stockier and about 50% larger than a domestic cat. They're very quiet and can easily hide in burrows and under vegetation. They usually have a tabby pattern coat, which helps them camouflage in tall grass. Their coats blend in with vegetation in their prey's eyes. Even us, with triconal vision, have a hard time spotting them in the wild. This is particularly helpful for their kittens, which are born defenseless. While they may be geographically closer to the Eurocats, the African wildcat is more closely related to the insanely rare Chinese mountain cat, which can only be found on the northeastern edge of the Tibetan Plateau. If I ever got to see a Chinese mountain cat, I would literally die. African wildcats are slightly larger than your average domestic cat, but about the size of a Bengal. This is my Bengal nebula for you to get an idea for how big they are. And loud. Nebs is real loud. <laughs> so far, they seem like fairly standard small cats. But their true claim to fame is being the ancestor to every domestic cat in the world. No big deal. The African wildcat are to domestic cats what wolves are to dogs. This sturdy wild hunter got domesticated 10,000 years ago in the Middle East. And ever since then, their litter-trained descendants have been following us wherever we go, begging for scraps and getting their little claws into everything. The domestication of the African wildcat happened at a crucial time, when people were abandoning their hunter-gatherer ways and turning to agriculture for a more reliable source of food. These delicious carbs attracted grain-eating rodents and birds, which in turn attracted African wildcats. In the wild, African wildcats eat rodents, hares, lizards, medium-sized birds like francolins, and even newborn antelopes. Those are the same animals that would be considered pests by early farmers, and the reason that some African wildcats basically domesticated themselves. Being around humans means easy access to their natural prey, as well as shelter. When your cat acts weird and hides in boxes or climbs to high locations for seemingly no reason, 
It's all a sort of evolutionary flashback. In the African wildcat's natural habitat of deserts, grasslands, and savannas, there aren't a lot of places to hide, and predators are always on the lookout. They're not big enough to be prey for lions, and it would be a bit weird to see a cat eat another cat. But Marshall and Golden Eagles, jackals, and pythons often prey upon the African wildcat. The domestic cat's reported fear of cucumbers seems to be an evolutionary aversion to snakes that arose from their days on the African savanna. Their rivalry with domestic dogs started over a million years ago, and to this day, canids are still one of their chief threats. Their coat is similar to those of other wildcats. It is the most efficient camouflage they can have in their dry habitats. All the colors of modern domestic cats are relatively new thanks to breeding for looks. But of course, an adorable Persian wouldn't do well in the savannas and deserts of Africa and the Middle East. Wildcats have to be discreet and approach their prey quietly before pouncing. Most of their prey live in burrows, so a reckless attack will lead them directly into the safety of their nest and leave the cat hungry. Besides the coloring and size, the main difference between wildcats and domestic cats is that wildcats are more solitary. Feral domestic cats tend to form colonies and tolerate each other to a degree. The African wildcat is a lone cat and only hangs out with others during mating season. Their litters are smaller than those of domestic cats, with just about three kittens on average. So. With a vast range and the ability to adapt to a huge variety of environments, the African wildcat must be doing great, right? Technically, yes, but as usual, their kids are becoming a problem for them. As human populations expand and bring domestic cats with them, these house cats tend to hybridize with wild cats, creating offspring that's less well equipped for life in the wild pure African wildcats are becoming rarer. This isn't a problem unique to African wildcats. Scottish wildcats have gone genetically extinct due to hybridization with domestic cats. There are virtually no pure Scottish wildcats left in the wild. On top of causing a degradation in genetic integrity, Domestic cats can introduce diseases to wild populations. There is not a lot that can be done beyond sterilizing domestic cats, but this is both expensive and time-consuming, and simply not a priority for local governments. But if their numbers dip below a certain number, scientists can enlist domestic cats to help their ancestors. Housecat females have been proven to be effective surrogate mothers for African wildcats. A fertilized African wildcat egg can be implanted into the uterus of a domestic cat. It's a complicated process, but it's one that might eventually save this and other small cat species. Hopefully we'll never get to a point where this is necessary for the African wildcat. So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. See ya. If you're happy and you know it's a meow. If you're happy and you know it's a meow. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, say meow. Meow. <laughs> I think she's happy.